Gotcha. Hello everyone, and welcome to another Monster Hunter World video, this is the Game Economist, and today we're going to be talking about the best Kov Taroth weapons in the game. In particular, these are my favorite five weapons that you can earn with Kov Taroth. The first time I drafted a script for this video, I quickly realized if I tried to talk about every single meta-changing weapon in Kov Taroth's RNG loot pool, that the video could easily stretch on to be about an hour long. So. To be practical about it, I'm constraining myself to just a top 5 list, and if you want to share your top 5 weapons that you can earn from Kov Taroth, feel free to do that in the comment section, and we'll see whose uh, list of weapons gets upvoted the most. It'll be interesting, right? Let me start by saying that each of the weapons I chose significantly impacted the weapon tier list for their weapon class, right? That weapon class. However, there isn't going to be any particular order to my list because it's well, I, I kind of discovered it's hard, it's hard to judge different weapons from across weapon classes, right? Like, is a bow better than a gun lance, right? It's kind of hard to do that. I, I could have put them in order of which ones come in first place for a speed run, for example. Uh, with that being said, the last weapon on this list is also going to be the one that I think changed the game the most, so you should at least enjoy the anticipation for the weapon at the bottom of the list, in fifth place or first place, however you want to, you know, I, who cares about the number work, but yeah, the last weapon I talk about will be the one that I believe changed the game the most. All right, beginning the list, I picked out the Terranth Pipe Sleep for the Hunting Horns. One of the reasons I decided to talk about the Hunting Horns is because I want players to know more about their Hunting Horn options, and hopefully this will encourage more players to give it a try. Terranth Pipe Sleep is able to securely outdamage the deep Vero, as long as you can keep the peak performance skill active. Okay, so it's kind of a kind of an asterisk to that, right? This is very similar to a situation we have with the longsword meta, where the highest damaging longsword needs to keep peak performance active in order to maintain its advantage. I also wanted to mention that it is, in fact, pretty fun to unlock uh, the sleep ailment as well on this hunting horn, even though it's not the optimal way to deal damage, gives you an extra way to cause crowd control on the monster. So there's really two ways you can play with it. You can go uh, with the element list decoration and go pure damage with the peak performance, or maybe you can go with the uh, KO decorations and free element to get kind of like double crowd controls on the monster. I also enjoy the Basil Gu's horn buffs on this hunting horn, right? Those are the that's the buff set that it carries with it. It's, it's a very decent set. So like all the weapons on this list, this new hunting horn changes the weapon tier list for speedrunners, but also is just a very nice weapon for anyone who happens to pick it up. It's, it's one of those harder to, to, to unlock weapons, unfortunately. But we'll have more weapons on the list that aren't rarity eight, so let's let's move on. Second on the list is the Terrath Crest Claw. This is a rarity 7 lance that quickly became the new lance meta once players figured out that it existed. Similar to many of the top tier weapons in the game, it's popular simply for putting out efficient damage. You'll notice the 90 fire damage as its elemental type, but of course, the whole point of that is to leave it locked and instead build the elementless decorations. We were just talking about this, which happens to be more efficient than trying to build three levels of free element, right? So uh, you can either get a burst of damage with uh, 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 elementless using one medium decoration slot, or you can unlock whatever it is the hidden element is. You can unlock that with three levels of free element. That's expensive, right? That's how elementless plays into uh, the meta. If you, I use the word meta too much, but. It really does, right? We consider that in terms of build efficiency. So Terrath Crest Claw easily became the best raw option for lances, with the Fiendish Tower sitting somewhere in second place depending on what it is that you're fighting. Fiendish Tower gets a decent chunk of dragon damage out, and it has Elder Seal, which is especially nice for locking down certain annoying Elder Dragon auras, right? I also love the way the Terrath Crest Claw looks aesthetically. Many of the Kov Taroth weapons don't look that good, but this is a case where the gold casing pairs pretty well with the original art design of the weapon, right? The original Odogaran art design. Third on this list is a Rarity 6 weapon that Kov Taroth drops, so most of you guys should be able to get this pretty quickly. It's one of only three Rarity 6 weapons worth holding on to out of Kov's 30 million different weapons that she can drop. It's a long shelling gun lance called the King Gold Exploder, and it's pretty shockingly easy to use against the Elder Dragons. Like. If you're having trouble with any of the regular Elder Dragons, I'm not talking about Zora Magdaros, of course, and when I say regular Elder Dragons, 
I, I should have I should have actually explained. I mean the regular arch-tempered Elder Dragons. If you're having trouble with those, then you can actually whip out a fairly defensive build with the King Gold Exploder and really go to town on those monsters from not only a safe distance, but also from behind a shield. I haven't officially tested it, but I highly suspect that the long shelling gun lances have the most range of any melee attack in the game. I don't know, maybe someone in the audience has already tested for this. If you have, just, uh, I don't know, tell me in the comment section. But yeah, having the best melee range in any combat-based video game is a pretty meaningful attribute, right? It's an advantage, especially when your damage output isn't too bad either. With that being said, it's also not the most damaging gun lance in the game, and if you're curious about all of the powerful gun lances that Kovtaroth drops, I did recently talk about that subject pretty extensively in my top 5 gun lance guide, which you can find on my channel as well. So third place went to King Gold Exploder Gunlance, fourth on my list is getting close to home to the weapons I really love. This slot goes to the Terrath Blitz support, which I initially and wrongfully thought would be a weaker version of the Terrath Blitz shot, except it would have better ailment ammo, uh, which the Terrath Blitz shot lacks, right? But nope, in true Monster Hunter World balancing fashion, the Terrath Blitz support not only comes with the powerful ailment ammo types, it also has the strongest rapid fire normal ammo too of any of the light bow guns in the game, beating out the Terrath Blitz shot. Now admittedly, it's also going to be a very difficult weapon to unlock since there are so many Rarity 8 weapons in the Kov Taroth weapon RNG pool, but that's not my fault, and at least on the PC, hopefully there's going to be a mod that allows you guys to access this gun without sinking 800 hours into just farming Kov Taroth, like, like I probably did. The Terrath Blitz support combines damage and ailments, and it's only going to get stronger with the new Zenajiva Gamma armor set, since normal ammo too is affected by the critical boost skill. Speaking of weapons that will get stronger with the Zenajiva Gamma armor, let's segue into the gun I chose for first place. Can you guess what it's going to be? That's right, to mostly none of your surprise, arguably the most powerful weapon added to the game with Kov Tarath was the Glutton Heavy Bow Gun, which is a rarity 7 bow gun. Although some of you may claim that some of the new meta bows are actually stronger, and that's a fair argument to make, those didn't make it onto the list, it's just because I, I chose the weapons that I enjoyed the most, right? I, I like the bows, but they're not my favorite. And that's why I'm saying you guys can make your own list and, and debate that with me if you want in the comment section. What I like about the Glutton Heavy Bow Gun is how simple it is to use. You barely need to learn any button combinations beyond aiming, shooting, reloading, and crafting ammo. For those of you that aren't sure exactly what the bow gun is, what it does so well, is a heavy bow gun that specializes strictly in using spread ammo. And some of the fastest speed runs that have ever been accomplished are completed with this weapon. So whether you're a speedrunner or just somebody casually hunting monsters, you're going to get a good downtime when you use this heavy bow gun. In fact, some people will argue that it's even kind of boring because of how easy it is to do well with, similar to the way cluster bombs have become something of a meme for being too easy. If you're having no luck with getting the Rarity 7 Glutton Heavy Bowgun to drop, keep your eyes open for the Rarity 6 Glutton Heavy Bowgun, which is still one of the best spread heavy bowguns in the game, even if it is outclassed by the Rarity 7 version of it. Alright, and that's going to be my top 5 list for Kov Taroth weapons. Again, there are many, many, many tier changing weapons in Kov Taroth's RNG loot pool, but it's simply too many for me to talk about in one video. So be sure to share your list in the comment section, and we'll see if any of them get upvoted to the top of the comment section. That's everything I want to say. I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.